that brings us into the post roast. And I heard that Greg didn't do his homework. So I didn't. I am going to give Greg not really a post roast, but a reader roast. So a reader oh, roast right. that's going to lead into the question of the week. And I know okay. you saw this, but I don't know if you've thought about it very much yet. So the comment from the reader, the roasted, you know, the, the comment that roasts us to collectively really is all right i think you and all of the points bloggers grossly underestimate the value of hilton points and bonuses so there there's our roast that you are grossly undervaluing hyatt bonuses or i'm sorry rather hilton bonuses and hilton points right so that's a that's the point that the reader made okay the, now they went on to explain why and it was a long explanation that i feel like kind of warrants a post. And so I, I may may end up looking at this and seeing how we can turn this into a post because I thought it was a, an interesting argument. It was quite long. But the essence of the argument was that there are three different Hilton credit cards. And so a couple playing in two player mode, if they were each willing to get the three cards, they would get six Hilton credit cards between the two of them. And the argument that was put forth was that you'd get an average return on spend of around 5X because you can earn 7X at restaurants with one of the cards and 6X at US supermarkets and gas and 3X everywhere else. And so he did some math and added it all up and said that you know with a couple playing in two player mode in year one, you could pretty easily end up with 1.1 million Hilton points and a few free night certificates. And so he okay. went on to say, mm -hmm. okay, the two player mode, they do that in year one. And then they use those points at a place like the Grand Wailea that costs $700 a night. And between the points and the free night certificates, you get yourself a $15,000 stay playing in two player mode in year one with, I don't know, 30,000 spend or something. He was, he was positing something along those lines. So what do you think, yeah. Greg? Are we undervaluing Hilton points and Hilton bonuses? Because you can get a lot out of these bonuses, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I, you know, I think we pride ourselves in grossly underestimating welcome <laughs> bonuses, right? I mean, so right. so if you look at our, our uh, best offers credit card page, we have an estimated first year value and that's based on a very conservative estimate of how much value you're, you, you may get out of your points. And like, if you look at the Hilton cards, for example, um, we're basing that on the fact that when I did some research, um, I found that on average in the US, various markets within the US, I, I only saw on average about 0.4 of a cent value per point with Hilton points. So that's the number that is at least currently used to estimate the value of a, let's say, a, you know, 100,000 point sign up bonus. Then we say, oh, it's worth. $400 for that first year. And, um, but we are very, very, very aware that you could get way, way more value than that <laughs> by using those points uh, at a better value. So, you know, there are places and that's why we love points. <laughs> that's right. why we love miles is because there are ways to use them to outsize value. And so, yes, he was pointing out some, some great properties where if you can get, if you can book them at the standard rate, which by the way, you published a post on how to, how to open up a Hilton calendar to, to find those standard points rates at Hilton's, which it's because it's not obvious how to find that calendar. But um, you know, if you, if you book your stay at those standard rates, you, you can get some incredible value at some Hilton properties. It's just not what you'll get. If you just randomly book hotels with points, you're not going to get great value that way. But that's true with, all of, all of the, the programs, all, all of the programs that are uh, point based and, and not like tied to a cash rate, like Southwest. I mean, it's pretty much tied right. to a cash rate, so you're not going to get grossly outsized value. But um, you know, let's look at the Hyatt offer. So uh, you know, those those um, sixty thousand points that you'll earn by the time you're done with all the spend, um, you know, you could easily use for uh, a you know. 
I looked up two nights like- at the Park High at New York recently, and it was nine seventy five yeah. a night or or thirty thousand points a night. So two right. nights you get yourself after Almost tax 2, more than more after tax more than two thousand dollars. More than two thousand. I was going to mention the Alila Big Sur, oh, Ventana no. Big Sur, Far which more. I think those pro- those nights start at fifteen hundred. So, so yeah, let's say you're more likely to spend about two thousand. Uh, so that's you know four thousand dollars from that bonus, or if you use the Sapphire Preferred hundred K offer. You're talking about three nights there. You're talking about four nights in a 25k property that can often cost, uh, you know, $800 a night. I mean, there are um, some incredible values to be had across the board, not just with Elton, but but yes, he had some good examples. Of he did have some good examples, value. but you know, you want your bloggers to grossly undervalue rather than grossly overvalue, right? right? Because if we grossly overvalue, if we based everything on what you can get at the Grand Wailea in Hawaii that may or may not have, I mean, 21, he used an example in the email of 21 straight nights at, you know, like $15,000 and like good luck finding 21 straight nights at the Grand Wailea where they actually (laughs) have standard room availability, you know, it's probably not going to happen. But, but, you know, you don't want us to base it on that, on that thing that you, A, probably can't get and B, probably aren't going to do every single year and, and C, might not even be on the radar or something interesting right. to everybody. You want us to base it on what you can expect to get at the Hampton Inn so that, you know, you have that much as a floor or more. And yes, you can get yes. a lot more. You can certainly get a lot right. more. Why? But I also want to caution you not to value your earnings based on how much outsized value you can get, because, you know, in the case of Hilton points, you can buy them for half a cent each. So if you're talking about, if you're going to do the funny math and say, you're going to get an average of five Hilton points per dollar spent, that's not terrible, but since you can buy them for half a cent each all the time, that's like two and a half percent cash back. You can get that much or more depending on, on what kind of a card you open. And, you know, if you can get, for example, the premium rewards card with platinum honors or the Alliant card, you can earn that much and then buy the points when you need them and want them and use the cash back for something else when you want. So it's, I I would caution you not to value everything based on your redemptions. Uh, But at the same time, like Greg said, we are well aware you can get a lot more value out of all of the points than, than what we list as like our baselines. And in fact, I would say probably both of us focus on those opportunities, generally speaking, to use our points for far more value. Right, right. So, so yeah, so look for our new tagline. We, we <laughs> proudly, grossly underestimate the value of rewards. <laughs> That's right. Proud of it. Proud of it. I'm not going to oversell you on something by saying, hey, look, you can do this because that's not going to apply to everybody. We're going to sell you on the fact that, look, you can count on this much or more. Uh, right. And I think that's a, a better way. To yeah. Look at it. I mean, beware of, of the websites that declare, you know, you're going to get $15,000 value from this sign up offer. You know, they are looking at those kind of extreme cases. And yes, it's possible theoretically to get that much value, but in reality, you probably won't. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but, and, and we love those extreme cases and, and we'll highlight those extreme cases too when yeah. we find them and book them and stay at them and, you know, and we'll Absolutely. highlight that, wow, this was awesome. But I'm not going to tell you, you should get the Hilton card too, because you too can stay at the Conrad and Bora Bora and save right. $2,000 or whatever. I'm going to tell you, you know, that you could do this with those points, but I'm not going to value the points based on that one exactly. French example. All yep. right. So there you go. That was the question of the week. That's it. Thank you guys very much for being out there with us today. We always enjoy and appreciate having you listening with us. If you enjoyed what we're talking about and you want to get on the email list so you can see whatever that post is that I cook up about the Hilton thing, uh, you want to go to frequentmiler.com slash subscribe. Again, that's frequentmiler.com slash subscribe to get on our email list. Follow us on Twitter and get join our Frequent Miler Insiders Facebook group, wherever you're watching or listening. Hit subscribe, ding the notification bell, hit like, leave us a comment. We appreciate all that stuff. It helps with whatever algorithms out there suggest this show to other people. So thank you very much for that. And we'll see you guys again next week. And don't forget, today is Black Shirt Day. Black shirt whatever day. day you're listening to this Doesn't show. Matter. It's Black Shirt Day. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Bye, everybody. Take care.